Okay, so in the previous video, we reviewed the basics of how to read an audio waveform using a waveform display, and also touched on the basics of metering using a peak meter, RMS meter, and VU meter. So before we start diving into compression, there's only one more thing that we need to learn about, and that's dynamic range. When we talk about audio, dynamics refer to how loud or how soft something is. Dynamic range refers to the difference between the softest and loudest parts of our audio signal. Human hearing has an incredible dynamic range. The dynamic range of our hearing can extend up to 140 decibels. Now, this varies from person to person, but essentially, it's measured with the range at which we can begin to hear, which is called the threshold of hearing, all the way up to the level that's called the threshold of pain. So, to put that in perspective, we can hear everything from the scratch of a pen on a piece of paper to the roar of a train passing by, and everything in between. Now, here's an experiment you can try. Go into a quiet space, like a closet or a bathroom. Extend your arm out in front of you and rub your fingers together lightly. You should be able to hear the faint sound of your fingers touching. Now, go ahead and clap your hands. This is a much louder sound, which may even be a little bit discomforting. Now, turn on a shower or a fan. Hold your fingers out in front of you again and see if you can hear your fingers rubbing together. Chances are you won't be able to hear it because of the background noise, but you'll still be able to hear yourself clap. When recording audio, this background noise is called our noise floor, and it's going to serve as the reference for silence compared to the other audio material we're recording. Technically, the difference between the noise floor and the loudest part of our audio signal is called the signal to noise ratio. So we can almost think of this as our effective dynamic range for our audio signal. Every piece of equipment has its own self noise that it generates from microphones, mixing consoles, preamplifiers, equalizers, etc. Now, no matter how quiet your recording chain is, this noise floor is well above the threshold of hearing. When working with audio, this noise floor is going to have to be our reference to silence, because we don't want to be able to hear this background noise. So this noise floor is going to have to be soft enough in comparison to the audio signal that we're recording, which ends up giving us a much lower dynamic range to work with. So the higher the background noise or the noise floor, the less dynamic range we have. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, we have to battle loud sounds. You would need a pretty impressive system to be able to generate both the silence and the loudness of the real world. So you'd have to think of a sound system that's able to clearly reproduce the silence needed to hear your fingers rubbing together, and also the volume required to replicate the sound of a jet engine. So this 140 decibel dynamic range that we work with in the real world needs to now be reduced to a signal that fits within our signal to noise ratio while still being able to capture and reproduce the nuances of the dynamics between the fluctuating signals. And this is exactly where compressors and limiters come into play. By reducing the dynamic range of the real world, we can now fit it in an electrical signal that our ears can easily make sense of when playing it back on a normal sound system. In the next video, we'll be learning all about how compressors work, and also discover the different types of compressors and electrical components that control them. Stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next video.